All right, so here is the Logitech MX keys, just the keyboard itself. And I got this MX palm rest with it. In the box, it has a little tab you can pull out. So, oh, like all good things, it's a box within a box. So you can see this has both the keys for a MacBook and a Windows device. Advertising their mouse. I will say, I do like the looks of it. And then of course in here is a little dumbbell guy. And I guess that's it. Nope, there's a cord in here. It's a USB-C cord. Pretty nice cord actually. It's got a little Velcro strap with an A on this side. And then it has this little dongle. Anytime it has that little star on there, that means it can be like paired with other devices have the star on it. Like for example, this Logitech mouse that I already use, its dongle has a star on it, so I should be able to map the keyboard to that dongle. You know, I might not even have to use this one, although I probably will, because it's the one that came with it. See, this is the other dongle that I already had, and this is the brand new one. They look pretty much the same though. So you can see some of the major selling points were that it had MacBook keys and Windows keys in the same places. And it's, you know, it's just a generally a nice keyboard as well. You can see, on the edge here, it's very thin. It has like a little overhang there, so it's, it's got a little slant to it when you're typing on it. Comparison here's an actual MacBook keyboard. So it does appear like it's actually, I, mean, I would say it's probably the same thickness as the Mac keyboard, but it has an extra little chunk right here. So the Mac keyboard does not have that chunk. This is all one size on the Logitech and the Apple keyboard is slanted. So you can see on the MacBook keyboard, there's a control, control, shift, shift, option, option, command command space bar and then you have command command function in the middle but then options here and then a control over here and a control I guess option and control are kind of in one that's kind of weird the number pad looks pretty much the same same thing up top here so you have escape and escape brightness is in the same spot the multi key here is the same spot this little key is the same spot don't know what this is this should be keyboard brightness I would assume dedicated buttons here for the media controls, volume controls. There's an eject button on the Apple one, but not here. And then where you have the delete is the same spot, ends in the same spot, homes in the same spot, page up, page down, same spot. These three blank ones here, here on the Logitech, it lets you choose which device you want to use it with. So it will let you choose, you know, you can tie this to three different computers and then you can just choose the one from that button in some capacity. I do like this dedicated calculator key because I use a calculator all the time on the computer so I like that dedicated camera key which is pretty nice I don't normally see that I would assume that one locks the screen which I like that because I use that a lot I don't know what this is I like to read a book or see something on that one this is a clear and another lock I guess it's a number lock key maybe or the Apple keyboard doesn't have a number lock it's just automatically on there but it's a pretty good job of comparing to a Apple keyboard and this is the Lenovo keyboard that I use all the time for my Windows devices. Should be a similar situation on the bottom here. Control. There's a function key here that's not here. Option start. That's interesting. Command. Oh, so that's weird. I guess the start is the Windows key, maybe. It's just missing the function key. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. There's the function key. And here's this little key. Looks to me, I guess, what this is. I really don't know what that key is. I never use it. Up here on the top, it's an escape and escape. It looks like a function lock. I just don't know how that'll work. Brightness here. This is volume controls. The volume controls are, of course, on this side of this keyboard. The play pause controls are all here. Because there's a stop button here that's not on the Logitech one. This has like a screen clipping button. But I don't think that one works. I think I've tried that and it doesn't work. Maybe it's programmed something that doesn't work fresh out of the box. Now this keyboard is the Lenovo, which I like a lot, but this is different than normally I work this way, right? But normally your delete key is not like this, even though I do like that delete key a lot. So this is on the Logitech ones, probably looks more like a standard keyboard. Page up, page down, ends over here, which is a little weird, but probably get used to it. And I never use any of these keys anyhow, so. What I do use on a regular basis are volume controls, uh, media controls, and let's say I'm, like, I'm glad to have a calculator button back. Just for comparison's sake, here is the bridge keyboard. It's very dusty. My son uses this for his Chrome box. So you can see there'll be very different controls for a Chrome box. See how thick it is. So this Lenovo one is an ultra slim keyboard and it's going to be similar to that where it's about the same size. It's hard to get light in there and hold this at this angle. But you can see it's about the same size and the Apple keyboard are about the same size. So 
same thing with very like the physical keyboard's about the same but this big logitech bumper thing makes it a little bit different size and this guy was like a little 20 dollar add-on yes yeah, so this is literally just a little palm rest and it also comes with a book for some reason yeah essentially you know you put your hand on here while you type it should provide better ergonomics so i like that all right let me get this set up and then we'll we'll go that route and when you plug it in it does light up green there so let me charge it up and we'll take a look all right, so as we charge this guy up, all right, I already have a dongle plugged in, so let's try to use that one that's existing. All right, so here I am on my computer, and if you don't have the Logitech app, you would need to install it. I already have it installed. Logitech options. It gets frequent updates. Uh, if you use Google Logitech options, it's a simple software. So you can see this is the mouse I currently have. It is the M720. So I do like this mouse. I don't see me buying the other one, the MX one, because I mean, this mouse is so good. I don't really see a point. And it will also do the three different computers. So I don't know that I need to switch to the more expensive mouse just for a little side scroll wheel, which I wouldn't. Personally, I don't see me using that. All right, so now I'm gonna click here to add devices. So you see you compare up to six compatible wireless mice and keyboards to a single Logitech unifying receiver. So I'm gonna add a device uh, to it. And it says to restart the device. So move the slider off, then on. And it's already off, so I'm gonna turn it on now. And we'll see if it just automatically finds itself or what happens. Yep, it automatically did. So done. All right, so there I am. Here's my MX keys. So this is, you have the backlighting of the keys. Uh, let me see if I press that. Yeah, you can see how there changes on the screen and on here, so that's very nice. Next, we have the battery notification. So this comes on when the battery life goes below 10%. That's this guy right here. So it sets those automatically for you. You can change that however you like. So I may need to change this MacBook one, this one here. Set your F keys. So switch between your media and your FN keys anytime by pressing FN plus escape. Yeah, I mean, I don't use the F keys very often, so it shouldn't be a problem for me. I don't know if that's good or bad. We'll see how I like it. So I don't understand. I guess this will be device one will be with the Logitech Unifying Receiver and device two would be with the Bluetooth, maybe. Because yeah, I do have two devices I want to use. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, you know, still fortunately, but unfortunately, you know, I bought this thinking I would use, I would switch between my MacBook and my Windows device, but I no longer have a MacBook, and now I just have my Windows desktop PC and my Windows ThinkPad for work. Before I had a MacBook for work, now I have a ThinkPad for work. So you can change F1 to F12 as standard function keys. Uh, I'm gonna have them, all right, so this is brightness down, of course, brightness up, that's for a laptop, essentially task view. Action Center. I don't know what that is. Uh, I mean, so I'll mess with this and try to figure out how I want it to be. You know, for a MacBook, that's a good key. For Windows, I got to figure out what I would like to have that set to. And this one is Show Hide Desktop. I see. Oh, I do like that button. Then uh, backlighting the keys down, of course. Previous track, play, pause. Oh yeah. So this is Show Hide Desktop. I do like that button. I will use that a lot. I don't know how much I'll use this action key. I can resize something, of course. Calculator. Oh, screen capture. I'm stupid. I thought that was a camera. This one is an app menu. Let's see. I'm going to change that to something else. Now we'll lock uh, your device, I guess. And as you can see, your firmware version. You can check it to be always in Windows layout, which is what I'm going to do. Like Normally, I would uncheck it, I guess, because I thought I bought it for a MacBook, but now I'm just going to keep it in Windows. And I can disable backlighting because I don't need it. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to turn it down low. I'll make your battery last longer. Battery saving mode. It turns your backlight off. It's only 10% left. So that makes sense. Device battery becomes low, you get a notification, that's fine. Show the backlight adjustments on screen, I like that. I'll let you know when a lock key is pressed, like caps lock or number lock. So like, let's see if I hit. Yeah, let's see, number lock comes on. That's nice, number lock. I don't think it lights up on here though, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, caps lock on, so the caps lock does have a light. I don't know if that'll come up on the camera or not, but there's a light there. It does not appear to be a number lock. Oh, that's neat, you can disable these keys. I like that. Oh, and if you have a Bluetooth problem, you can report it here. So that's a pretty good. You can take a backup of your current 
device and then software. This is the application itself. All right, so that's good. I will turn off my Lenovo keyboard. Let me just open up. Let me just write something here. Never know. I'll use my little pad here. I'll get my keyboard as close to my microphone as I can. I'll put, hi, uh, my name is Mike. I think. So, I mean, typing is pretty nice. I do kind of like this little padded guy here. Let me try without it. So, I generally type pretty fast. I don't see it slowing me down any. Just for reference, here is my Lenovo keyboard. These are a little more clicky. This keyboard's sturdier though, it's not gonna slide around. Like this one's pretty light, sometimes it slides on the desk when I'm trying to type stuff. And just for sound reference, this would be the MacBook keyboard. I guess the keys are kind of softer maybe, I don't know. I do like the keys at this little indents. You know, obviously on the key cap itself, there's a little indent like thing there. So I like that. All right, and that's about all I got here. I will uh, mess with the keyboard for a couple days and then I'll give you a final thoughts on it. But so far, I like it. I mean, it looks good, I think. I really like this mouse anyhow, so it matches just fine. I like that. Ideally, I have this Philips monitor here that has a built-in USB-C dock. So hopefully I can put my dongle in here into the monitor and then I can switch between my desktop and the laptop and just use one mon you know, one laptop. I could switch on one keyboard. I could switch to Bluetooth, of course, but I'd rather just use the dongle. All right, I'll come back in a little bit and let you know how I think about it. All right, so I've had this keyboard for a while. I like it a lot. As you can see, you compare it to one, two, or three computers here. So I'm gonna try a trick that I think I figured out from Reddit to have more than one uh, unifying receiver and just pair that one to this one. Uh, and that should work out pretty good, I hope. So until right now, I'm on number one. So if we go to the screen here and look at Logitech options, and we click on the MX keys, and the easy switch, you can see device one is the Windows 10 desktop. So what I'm gonna try to do is pair it to this different device. So right now we're on device one. If I hold it here, it's just blinking and it says nothing. So I'm gonna unplug the existing dongle, plug in the new dongle, and now I'm gonna try to pair that. Now the problem is you need an extra mouse. So I have this other Lenovo mouse but I have a different dongle paired in, so now I will try to add a device. And we're gonna do add unifying device. Turn this off and on, and I was back on two. So now it's paired number two, so that's good. So now it's done on there. And let me go back here. So now you can see they're both Windows 10, but I'm gonna move this to a different device. I'm just pairing on here because this is, I'm gonna move this one to my work computer, but I don't wanna record my work computer, of course. So let's go back to keyboard. Yeah, so the only thing there on this device currently is that. So I'm going to add this one. You can see I'm normally sitting on three. So I'm going to put this on two. And I'm going to click Add Unifying Device. And now you can see two is flashing. So I'm going to turn it off and then on. And hopefully it will recognize two. There we go. So now it has been paired. So done. All right, so that's good. We can close this. And then we can go back to your devices. Here's the mouse. All right, so now we're on two, right? Okay, so two's here, so let me change it to one. It's not working on one, see? Now I'm gonna take this dongle back out. This is getting confusing, I'm sorry. And go back to my original dongle. Yeah, three was paired to it, so let me erase three. So just hold that button down to erase it. So now I'm gonna go back to your devices and then add a device. So I'm gonna turn this off and on for one. There we go. All right, so now we go to here and the easy switch. You can see they're both on Windows 10. So yeah, this would be better by a different device. But again, that's this device. So one dongle is one and second dongle is two. So now let me just give it a shot. Okay, so now it does work here. All right, perfect. I can't show you, but just trust me, this ThinkPad now has this dongle in it. And my desktop has another dongle in it. Let me log in and see if that changes the name. 
All right, and now we're back here. Yeah, so this is incorrect. I don't know why it doesn't update itself, but it worked. So again, that's gonna be confusing, but trust me, now I have two different dongles paired. One dongle on my desktop, and the second dongle is in my laptop. And so my change to this, I don't know why it's flashing like that. There we go. Yeah, so you just need to press the one you want it on. And now you can see on the screen it does not work. If I go back to one, now it does work. So, pretty cool. So again, that part might have been a little confusing. I apologize for that, but just trust me. That's one of the benefits of this. You can do one, two, three. You can do Bluetooth, of course. But for me, I like the dongles. They work better. Certainly with this ThinkPad, it does not wake up over Bluetooth the dongle is required for it to wake up. So I have this Philips monitor that has ThinkPad hooked up through Thunderbolt and then the, the Windows PC hooked up through DisplayPort. So now I can just change inputs to my monitor and it works just fine and I can keep the same keyboard, which I'm very happy about. All right, that's probably all I got. I really like this keyboard, I highly recommend it. I really like this mouse. They sell, they sell a much more expensive one to match this one, but this one I'm a big fan of and it's a lot less expensive than MX Keys mouse. You can do more stuff with that one, of course, but I like this mouse. All right, thanks for checking me out.